Welcome to example number six. In this example we have a rectangular loop moving through a magnetic field. The loop's dimensions of length and width and along with its resistance are given. We are also told that it is moving to the right at constant velocity into, then through, and then out of the magnetic field. In part A we are asked to plot the magnetic flux for this loop as a function of time. So let's start off with A. If you recall, we define the magnetic flux through a plane surface in a constant magnetic field as B times A times the cosine of the angle between the magnetic field and the normal to that plane. Now since the magnetic field is pointing into the screen, which is perpendicular to the surface, then we can simply write it as B perpendicular times the area. Or you could just simply say that the angle theta is zero degrees and the cosine theta disappears because it's really equal to one. Now, if you notice in the diagram, we have defined a little X in here, which is the position of the right side of the loop along an X axis that would be going along here. So at t equals zero, the loop is just starting to enter the field. And so we say that x is equal to zero at this point. The flux will be the area that is enclosed within the magnetic field. So in, for example, this little picture, it would be really just this area that I am shading in. So we can rewrite the uh, flux as simply um, B times the area, where the area is equal to the length of the loop multiplied by that position X of the right side of the loop. So our magnetic flux formula now becomes BL times X. All right, let's start to construct our graph where we're going to plot the magnetic flux on the y-axis, which is based on the area that is enclosed by the loop within the field, versus the time along the x-axis. So there are my axes labeled here with flux in Weber's and time in seconds. And at t equals zero, this right side of the loop is over here and it's just starting to enter to this field and it starts to slide in and in, in until eventually it is completely submerged within the field. So at, at t equals zero, our position of our right side of the loop is also zero and so our magnetic flux is really b times l times x but x is zero so there is no flux. So at time zero seconds, we have zero magnetic flux and we're looking at this point right here. Okay, now let's consider a time of say two seconds. And we'll just call this two seconds right over here. Um, what would be our new position x? Remember that the speed of the loop to the right is two centimeters per second. And if we were to find the new position x, we would just simply take the speed and multiply by the time. So two centimeters per second multiplied by two seconds means its position is now going to be four centimeters in. All right, so if we were to calculate the magnetic flux now at this particular point, and the loop now would be about halfway between being in the field and out of the field. Remember the width of this loop is a total width of eight centimeters. Our magnetic flux would be equal to B L times X. In this case, B is, um, I believe, two Teslas. The length is uh, 0.1 meter. And the X position is 0 0.04 meters. And this will give us a magnetic flux of 0 0.008 Weber's. So let's go ahead and label that on our axis. We'll put this as 0 0.008, and this is at t equals 2 seconds. 
Okay, let's consider now t equals 4 seconds and our position x will be equal to, well, 2 centimeters but now being multiplied by 4 seconds and therefore we'll get a total position of 8 centimeters. And then if we use our magnetic flux formula of BLX with two Teslas multiplied by 0.1 meters, but now a position of 0.08 meters, we're going to get an answer of 0.016 Weber's. So let's go label that on here, 0.016 Weber's, and this is at four seconds, and we would get up to here. So hopefully you're starting to see that there's actually a linear relationship right here. So between zero seconds all the way up to four seconds, when the uh, loop is just entering within the field, we have a flux that is increasing linearly until that left edge of that loop is just inside the field. And remember then, eight centimeters of the width of the loop is now within the total region of 40 centimeters. It's going to take another 32 centimeters for the right side of this loop to move all the way to the other side and just start to leave the region of the magnetic field. It'll take it another 16 seconds for the loop to move to this side right over here. And you might be asking yourself, well, how did I get 16 seconds? Well, if you recall our formula that we used earlier, the displacement is equal to the speed multiplied by the time interval, where we needed to move an additional 32 centimeters at a constant speed of 2 centimeters per second, and hence it traveled 16 seconds to get from this end to this end while it was completely enclosed within the field. So let's label our axes down here. And I've relabeled and actually moved my scale a little bit longer because I realized that it's going to take it up to 20 seconds for this loop to reach where the right side of the loop is reaching the far exterior side of the magnetic field. During these 16 seconds, the magnetic field is going to remain constant at this value because the entire loop is going to be enclosed by the magnetic field and it's not going to be changing. It's going to be that constant value of 0.016 Weber's. So at each of these times we have a constant value all the way up to 20 seconds. So we draw a horizontal line for that 16 second time interval. Then finally this loop here starts to leave the field and the flux starts to decrease in the same way this field was increasing for the first four seconds. So at say 22 seconds we'll have a magnetic field of 0 0.008 Weber's and then at point at 24 seconds we're going to be back to zero. So we can see during the first four seconds as the loop is entering the field we have a constant increase of magnetic flux and then it's constant while it's within the entire field being completely enclosed and then as the loop starts to leave the field it linearly decreases until it reaches zero at 24 seconds. Now let's move on to part B where we're asked to find the induced EMF and plot it as a function of time. From uh, Faraday's law we know that the induced EMF is equal to the negative rate of change of the magnetic flux. Earlier above you can see we derive the magnetic flux in this particular case to be equal to BL times that position X with respect to the right side of the loop. So if we substitute that into our Faraday's law, we get the negative change of BLX over time. And in this particular case, the position X is really the only variable that is changing with time, and the magnetic field B and the length L are actually remaining constant. So we could pull them out of the equation and rewrite this as negative BL delta X all over delta T. And delta X divided by delta T is really just the 
horizontal velocity to the right. So therefore, our induced EMF is really equal to negative B L V, which is really the formula that we derived earlier in the induced motional EMF in a conductor moving through a constant magnetic field, if you look back earlier in your notes. Alternatively, you could just simply look at the above graph and remember that Faraday's law says it's the rate of change of the magnetic flux over time, which is really just the slope of the above graph, at here, and here, and here. Remember that Faraday's law says it's the negative rate of change of that magnetic flux, so it's really the negative slope of the above graph. So let's graph our induced EMF in volts as a function of time in seconds. If we look at the time interval of zero seconds all the way to four seconds, we can calculate the EMF by taking the slope of that line. Or alternatively, you could simply use this equation over here. So from uh, t equals zero to four seconds, the EMF would be equal to negative BLV. That would be equal to negative two Teslas times 0.1 meters times the speed of two centimeters per second, which is really 0.02 meters per second and that will give you an EMF of negative point zero zero four volts. Alternatively you could just take the slope of this line so I'll just write this as a, just a different solution and just write the negative slope of graph above graph and so you would have a negative change in flux over the change in time which would be negative of point 0.016 Weber's all over a time interval of four seconds. And we would get the same answer of negative 0.004 volts. So during the zero to four second time interval, the potential is, or the EMF that is being induced is constant. And uh, so we would be drawing a horizontal line below the x-axis at a uh, value of 0.004 volts, negative 0.004 volts something like this. So now let's take a look at the region of 4 seconds all the way to 20 seconds. The EMF can be calculated by finding the change in the magnetic flux over the time. But as you can see here, this is a horizontal line. And so the slope of this line is 0. The flux is not changing, so therefore there is no EMF induced while the loop is completely enclosed within the field. So from 4 seconds to 20 seconds, we're going to draw a horizontal line on the x-axis. And so your graph is looking like this now. And then lastly, we'll be looking at 20 seconds to 24 seconds. And so here, as the loop leaves the field, the induced EMF will be given by positive BLV. And so we will get the same values here, except the answer will be 0 0.004 volts, but it will be a positive potential. So we're going to be getting a horizontal line here. And if we were to look at as the loop finally emerges away from the field region, then the EMF will then drop back down to zero. And so there's your final picture of the induced EMF as a function of time. And lastly, let's take a look at the induced current. In part C, we're asked to find which way does the induced current flow as the loop enters the field as it is in the field and then as it leaves. Now if you recall if we were just to calculate the induced current itself we would just simply take the EMF and divide it by the resistance. And in when the field when the loop is entering the field or leaving it it will have the same uh, potential or magnitude of the potential the only difference is it's just going to be either positive or negative. If we were simply looking at the induced magnitude of that induced current uh, without the direction of it, we would just simply take 0 0.004 volts and divide by the resistance of the loop, which is 2 ohms, and we would get an induced current of 0 0.002 amps. And we could plot the graph. The graph would be very, very similar to what we have down here when we were looking at the um, induced EMF. It would be the same thing as we have down there. Well, what about the direction of the uh, current that is in the loop. Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? There's a couple ways of doing it. 
Um, if you think of it through emotional EMF, you could do it that way. Uh, if you were to just consider this right side of the loop here, and you could think of it as just like a bar here, and if you were to say look at a positive charge here, Q, and then use your right hand rule where your fingers point into the page and your thumb is to the right, then you see that your hand, your palm will be facing upwards and so all the positive charges will move if they were free they would move to the top and all the negative charges would move to the bottom and so that really this this right side of the bar would be like a uh, battery with the positive terminal on the upper end and the bottom end of the bar going to be the negative and so the current would flow from the positive towards the negative and so we would have current that is going counterclockwise in the beginning when it's entering the loop. Then when we look at this rectangular loop leaving the field, then we consider the left side of this loop as the bar here. The reason I'm doing that is because the right side of this loop is no longer in the field and so there will be no emotional EMF. And so really the emotional EMF will only be caused by this left side of the bar. Now again, if you consider a positive charge here moving to the right, uh, then you will find by the right hand rule the positive charges will move to the top end of the bar and the negative charges will move to the bottom end of the bar and again you'll have a battery essentially from the, over the positive at the top and the negative at the bottom and the current will flow from the positive towards the negative and it'll go around in the clockwise direction. And down below I've written a more formalized statement here. So from 0 to 4 seconds we have a induced current of 0 0.02 amps in the counterclockwise direction by Lenz's law. From t equals 4 seconds all the way to 20 seconds there's no induced current since there's no changing flux. And then from 20 to 24 seconds the induced current is 0 0.002 amps in the clockwise direction. So um, that's it for this example.